But we also have many liberals. Now our primetime lineup, uh, that tends to be one way or the other, and you watch MSNBC, you get strange stuff. You watch Bill O'Reilly, he's basically a middle of the rotor. Greta's fair and balanced. Uh, Beck is a libertarian, Hannity's a conservative. But they always have liberal guests on. You never see that on the other networks. They never have a conservative guest on. And so maybe that's why they're not doing as well. Four years ago, a Pew study said, uh, said about 60% of Americans expressed the view that belief in God is essential to morality. I thought that was low. But then I read further and it said 91% of national journalists said that belief in God is not necessary to morality. And it also said that over 90% frankly don't attend church. But they're all environmentalists, and I have a theory that environmentalism to some degree is replacing religion with those people, and that is, you know, if you have one of those green things on, you're a good person, and if you don't, you're not, and I think that's strange. Um, because we used to worship the rocks and the trees and the water, it was called paganism, <laughs> but now it's just called something else. I don't believe there's anybody in this auditorium who want their kids to drink dirty water or breathe dirty air or are not competent to keep your land use good for your family or whatever. But the federal government wants to help you. And of course, you know what that means. One of our founding fathers, John Adams, the second president of the United States said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government otherwise. How far away from the Founding Fathers have we come? That's the question, rarely asked in the media. A Fox News Opinion Dynamics poll, Opinion Dynamics is a Democrat firm because we want to be sure that they don't accuse us of doing something funny. 78% uh, of Americans, this was a question on government spending. Uh, is it being managed carefully or out of control? Managed carefully, 14%. Out of control, 78%. 77% of elected officials in Washington are, say that Washington is doing more to add to the problems of the country. 16% say they're solving. So that's a problem. That's a disconnect between the media and what's going on. You don't see these numbers reported except on Fox, because it embarrasses the media, frankly. They're, they're, the stories are not being told that should be told. The mainstream media tends to act as a PR firm when they get behind some kind of an issue. You know about the health care bill. You've all seen that. You've seen the stacks of 2,000 pages. I don't know how long Gone with the Wind is, but it's long. <laughs> and the health care bill's a lot less interesting. But uh, somewhere, this little book, that's the Constitution of the United States. I carry it, and I make sure that some of our reporters carry it. Now, if that's put up against one page of the health care bill, it's about one-sixth. 2,000 pages in there. This is a hundred and some divided probably 35 pages. So a half a dozen people got in a restaurant in Philadelphia and in a few weeks came up with 35 pages that we've lived by for 230 <coughs> years. Everything in this 2,000 pages is meant to find a way to circumvent that. So until we can figure out or until we can elect people who are trying to figure out how to advance the country in simple terms so that people can understand it. And if you, have, if you try to read that health care bill, it is unreadable. I wasn't a great student, but I tried to get through 10 pages of it. This little book, on the other hand, is quite simple, very clear. So that's the balance. That's what you have to look at. Sometime, the American people are going to have to vote between these 2,000 page bills and this little book. And that's going to be the test in time that we all wait for.
They've been trying to write a constitution in Iraq. I recommended we send them ours. It was written by smart guys. It's 200 years old. We're not using it anyway. <laughs> so if Fox News didn't exist, somebody would have to invent it. We have a list of 30-some stories. Here are a few that, that were not covered or very, you know, in, in one-day coverage on other networks. Massive fraud at the UN on the oil for food scandal. Uh, communists in the advisor group of the, of the White House. Exposing of ACORN, an organization explicitly designed to steal votes. That's what they do. And at the moment, they have earmarked for them about eight and a half billion dollars to be spread out. Now, ACORN's closing its doors in New York, but it has metastasized into 270 other organizations at the local level. So we will be hearing from them in the future as soon as we can get <coughs> the names. These are not, these are my views and not Fox. My personal view is that the two biggest problems in the world are corruption and a lack of leadership. We have a desperate need to return to the basics, common sense things we all learned as kids. God, family, country, pay the bills, work hard, help your neighbor, of course, protect the earth and defend at all costs the ideal that is America. I take a lot of heat for Fox News, and uh, I was at a cocktail party. My beautiful wife Beth here, and Zachary, who's here, to, he's got Chuck's back. Uh, we take a lot of heat for it, and and they they say to me, "Well, you work for that conservative network, Fox News, right?" I said, "Let me ask you a question." Are you comfortable with the editorial position of CNN? Yes, I am. I said, what about MSNBC? That's fine. I said, what about ABC, NBC, CBS? He said, fine. I said, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, fine. I said, but this one little cable channel is driving you nuts because it just won't line up with your worldview. Is that the problem? He just stared at me. And I said, keep in mind, there only been two times, really, in history that they've lined everything up in one direction. That was under Hitler and Stalin. And that just didn't work out very well for a lot of people. So you must have alternative points of view in the media. If you're not getting them, look for them or demand them. Because if you don't have them, the loss of freedom is pretty close behind. Sir Alex Fraser Teitler, a Scottish writer, he was a philosopher, teacher, wrote in the 1800s, the average age of the world's greatest civilization has been 200 years. As soon as you, they learn they can take money out of the treasury and they collapse on bad fiscal policy. But he wrote that nations go through a sequence. The people usually start off in bondage. And then they develop spiritual faith. And then from spiritual faith to great courage. From great courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, and from dependency back into bondage. That's the life cycle. I hope and I believe the media ultimately will write itself and understand they have a place in keeping America free. I believe they may even begin to trust that these people will see that American exceptionalism is real. I tell my journalists to report the good, the bad, and the ugly. But when we hear people continually criticize America, to remember that America Everybody's trying to get in, and nobody's trying to get out. As for me, I only wanted three things in my life. A great family, an interesting job, and to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming my head off like the other passengers in the car. <laughs> Thank you very much.